This is the world's first bowling ball designed to hold a 360 camera. And yes, you can bowl with it. Yes. <laughs> this project is another collaboration with the awesome dudes over at Corridor Digital and ended up being one of the trickiest engineering problems I've ever had to solve. While putting a camera into a ball may seem straightforward, putting a 360 camera that literally sees everything into a transparent sphere that can smash into things and not break, that is a little more difficult. Eventually, I settled on the idea of a central metal frame sealed between two transparent domes, sort of like a camera terrarium that you throw down a bowling alley. The metal frame would hold the camera and give the ball some much needed weight, while the large domes should provide an unobstructed view for the 360 camera. Good idea in theory, but turning this into this turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Design challenge number one. Where am I gonna find bowling ball sized clear domes that are both optically clear and extremely impact resistant? Well, I started by ordering these giant Christmas ornament things off the internet and they seemed promising at first until I did a drop test. Three, two, one. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I don't know why that's so satisfying. Here we go. Oh! That broke. Mazel tov. Yeah. And as fun as it would be to just keep ordering random domes off the internet and smashing them, at this point I decided we needed to get some custom domes made. Lucky for us, I've got a dome guy. His name's Rod. Nice guy. Loves domes. The only problem was I couldn't decide between acrylic or polycarbonate. Acrylic is fairly scratch resistant. Plus, if it does get scratched, you can buff it out, but it's not the strongest. Polycarbonate, on the other hand, is virtually indestructible, but scratches much more easily. And once it's scratched, it's scratched. So acrylic is optically ideal and polycarbonate is structurally ideal. Uh, solution, panic by both, just in case. Either way, it was gonna take three weeks to have my custom domes made. Also worth noting, a real bowling ball is eight and a half inches in diameter, but the closest dome size I could get made was eight inches. Will that half inch make a big difference down the road? Yes. Yes, it will. While I waited for the domes, I decided to refine my design and make a 3D printed prototype. I made a plastic version of what will be our central metal frame and designed this camera cage that I 3D printed with a flexible material called TPU. This holds the camera in place and should act as a bit of a shock absorber. For the test domes, I designed and 3D printed a version with a bunch of holes cut out of it. This way we could at least get an idea of what the camera will see. I also designed these special mounting rings that allow the domes to come on and off the frame. My original plan was to use my CNC machine, the shredder, to cut these mounting rings out of aluminum. But after using the flexible material on the camera cage, I realized the mounting rings should definitely be flexible too. They'll be way easier to 3D print than CNC, plus provide some shock absorption for the domes. Honestly, I'm kind of embarrassed I was even considering aluminum. It's all part of the process. At this point, I had a finished prototype, but no camera. So I went over to Corridor Digital and we did some tests. The prototype was a big hit with the Corridor guys and it gave us a decent idea of what the final footage will look like. In fact, the video looking through the honeycomb test shells actually looked pretty cool. Like some kind of fisheye kaleidoscope made by a robot on mushrooms. Now that we had a successful prototype, it was time to ramp things up and get started on the real thing. Now we want our camera ball to weigh about the same as a real bowling ball or as close as we can get it. But 90% of it is lightweight plastic or air. So I designed the final version of our frame to be made of heavy steel. Specifically, four layers of quarter inch steel cut on a water jet machine and bolted together. I also had to figure out how to drill and tap a bunch of tiny holes into the sides of our metal frame. These holes had to all be in the exact right spot, but also at a sort of weird downward angle so that everything would line up. Solution, design and 3D print a custom drill jig. I also glued in these little copper tubes that should help the drill bit from drifting, but also hopefully prevent the jig from melting. Because drilling through steel generates a lot of heat. 
Honestly, it worked better than it had any right to, and the eight bolts that hold each ring to the frame lined up perfectly. After three weeks of waiting, the domes finally arrived. I tore open the box, held one up to the light, and immediately panicked. I mean, that's pretty clean. Ooh, oh man. It's pretty warpy. Oh my God. Oh, this might be bad. Uh, there was a lot more optical distortion than I was expecting. But after showing the domes to Ren and the Corridor crew, we decided it was gonna be okay. Our thinking was that when the domes are spinning, the distortion wouldn't be as noticeable. Also, we didn't have time to get new domes made. There was one other issue though. Turns out the plastic gets thinner when they form the domes. So all the mounting rings that I had printed didn't fit. So I had to go back, redesign, and reprint them. Again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. For context, it takes about two hours to print one of these flexible rings, and I think I was on version 10 when I finally got one that fit snugly, so yeah. Yay! Next up, I had to figure out the best way to attach the domes to the rings. My original plan was to use the same tiny bolts that I used to attach the rings to the frame, but drilling lots of tiny holes into our brittle domes seemed like a dumb idea. Glue seemed like a good option, but I had no idea which type would bond polycarbonate with 3D printed TPU or acrylic with 3D printed TPU. And apparently no one on the internet knew either, so I had to figure it out myself. Commence the glue test. Using some test sheets of acrylic and polycarbonate, I tested a bunch of different glues. I labeled them, I tested bonds, I used brightly colored clamps, and science. And by science, I mean whatever this is. I should probably be wearing gloves. <laughs> Woo! Some of them peeled off like stickers, others were pretty strong, and one was so strong, I broke the acrylic sheet. Oh! <laughs> uh... So if you ever need to bond these materials, I suggest the following glues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. With the right glue and the right rings, I was finally able to assemble my first fully functioning camera ball. But I rushed it, made a huge mess with the glue and got some on the clear part of the dome that the camera actually sees. I may have also said some swears. Why didn't I mask these off? Okay, this is the test one, this is the test one. This is the test one. Thank God, because I am screwing it up royally. I brought the slightly messed up version back to Corridor and we ran a few more tests to dial in the camera settings. We were a little worried about the metal frame causing unwanted reflections inside of the ball, so I painted one of the frames flat black. I also made one extra shiny just because I thought it looked cool. The last step was to glue mounting rings to the rest of the domes, this time using masking tape like I should have in the first place. And just like that, we were ready for the big day. On the day of the shoot, I met the Corridor crew at Montrose Bowl, this amazing little bowling alley that's been open since the 1930s. Not only did we have the place to ourselves, we even got a tour of the machinery behind the lanes, which was so cool. While Ren did some warm-up bowling, I attached two of the acrylic domes to our black frame and loaded up the 360 camera. It was finally time to see if this thing was going to work. I mean, I knew it was going to roll okay, but I had no idea what was gonna happen when it smashed into those pins. And after the first throw... Oh boy. We still didn't know. It was a gutter ball. A really awesome 360 shot of a gutter ball, but still a gutter ball. Well... Luckily, throw number two was right down the middle. And I gotta say, I felt a moment of sheer terror right before the ball hit the pins that I was not expecting. But it totally worked, nothing broke, and it even sounded like a real bowling ball when it hit. The next big question was, will our ball work with the ball return mechanism? No, it did not. Turns out the system was built for real bowling balls that are eight and a half inches in diameter not garage-built camera balls that are eight inches in diameter. Our genius solution? Cardboard. That's right, we started cutting up cardboard boxes from the snack bar and taping them to the track of the ball return machine, hoping it would fill the gap. After about an hour and a half of trial and error, we still could not get it to work. Then someone had the genius idea of just rolling a real bowling ball behind our camera bowling ball so that it pushes the camera ball up with it. And that worked beautifully every time. Right. 
we ended up all taking turns throwing the camera ball. And while it certainly got its fair share of scratches, I think the world's first 360 camera bowling ball was a huge success. We did eventually swap in some polycarbonate domes and as expected, they scratched more easily. But honestly, I kind of thought the way the scratches interacted with the light as the ball was spinning looked kind of cool. What I really want to know now is what it would take to break one of these, but I'll save that for a follow-up video. Well, that about wraps up this installment of Eric Beck FX. If you like practical effects and seeing this guy build crazy stuff in my garage, please subscribe. I've also got a Patreon, check it out. Huge thank you to Corridor Digital for bringing me in on this insane project. Please go check out their video where you can see a lot more of the test footage in our behind the scenes antics. I would also go check out the video we did together last year where I built them a truly epic air cannon that we used to fire a camera at over 200 miles per hour. As you can imagine, we broke some cameras, lots of cameras. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, hey, you're still here. You should leave a comment and let me know what project I should do next. Also, here's some more of my videos.